M. Night Shyamalan is back, baby, and with a very, very cool concept. And this time, he's bringing Josh Harnett along as a creepy, diabolical serial killer. And you know, you would think that this would be a complete slam dunk for Shyamalan. But unfortunately, the movie's biggest flaw is in its execution. However, I kind of want more of this. And I'll explain what I mean in a little while. So out the gate, I want to talk about the movie's biggest flaw. The one that stands at the very, very top. And trust me, there are many flaws with this movie. But there's one that's like the biggest sin of this movie. And that is like when you have a concept like this. Like, oh, a serial killer takes his daughter to a concert. Realizes that the whole concert is a trap to get him. It's like that inherently should be a thrilling watch. But it's not. And I think what this movie was missing is it needed to have scenes where the movie put you know cooper in a position where like there's no way out you know what i mean like he, he there needs to be there need, there need to be scenes where it's like oh no they got him they got him dead to rights like how is he going to get out of the situation like there's no way out and the movie needs to be clever enough to find ways to get him out of situations so it's like you know it needs to keep us on the edge of our seat being like oh they got him here it is they're gonna catch him and then he like you know finds his way out of the situation but there's never there's never a moment like that there's never a moment of tension and that's what this movie was missing is tension like how the fuck do you have this concept and not have any tension and it's like they kind of he kind of tries it's like there's a moment where he goes onto the roof and runs into two cops and they're like hey what are you doing here who are you but it's like i never for a moment thought that that was going to be you know the moment where he gets caught like i knew he was going to talk himself out of it like that's not tension i was never tense in that moment and as i reflect on the movie what it really is is it's like like an hour of Cooper just trying to find ways to escape the stadium, which is fine, I guess. I mean, it is entertaining and engaging. You know, I'll give the movie uh, some credit there. It is an engaging, you know, idea of like how this guy is going to leave the building. But like, there's never moments of tension trying to escape. And I thought that was just the biggest bummer of this movie, where it's like, how do you, how do you not have those scenes? And then there's the, uh, then there's the 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 performances and the dialogue what the fuck is going on with this movie when it comes to performance and dialogue like it's so weird like i think a lot of his performances in his movies are like robotic and very like not human if <laughs> to put it you know it just feels some of this dialogue in this movie is so laughable and just like what like, like let me give you an example there's a moment where cooper takes his daughter to the merch table right and his daughter's like hey can i get a small shirt and there's a, a little girl next to her and she's like i want a small shirt too and the employee's like hey sorry i only have one small shirt and so cooper leans down and he's like hey you know let her have it you know we'll come back later they'll restock we'll get another shirt and so the employee gives the shirt to the other little girl and then for some fucking reason the employee is like hey you're a good father i can tell you have good strong family values and i don't really see that much anymore and i'm like what the fuck who who would say that that is so weird like what you're a good father you got i can tell you got some good old straight family values it's like what are you talking about there are so many lines like that in this movie where it's like no one would ever say that and it's like it takes you out of the movie and it's almost like laughable like it's hard not to laugh at lines like that because it's so like it's so fucking alien like what and the other problem this movie has is that this is a movie that just like it's one of those it keeps going and it keeps going and it keeps going it's like you think the movie's gonna end at a certain spot and then it's just like nope we're gonna go for another 10 minutes and then oh i think it's gonna end here nope we're gonna go for another 15 minutes and it's like okay can we just can we get to the end at this point like we are so we are fucking all over the place at this point some of the decisions i actually like uh i don't know how other people feel but there is a major decision like halfway through the movie um which which I'll talk about in a minute. Towards the end, like the last 15, 20 minutes, it just kept going and going and going where I'm just like, okay, can we just stop? Okay, now that I'm done bitching about the movie, let's talk about things that I liked. I mean, Josh Hartnett. Josh Hartnett, man, good to see ya. Good to see ya. I'm so happy he's back, man. I, you know, I grew up on Josh Hartnett, you know, with, you know, the faculty, Halloween H2O, 40 Days, 40 Nights. And I'm so, I'm just so thrilled to see him again, like with Oppenheimer, Black Mirror, this, you know, he showed up in The Bear. I'm like, I, I can't wait to see more of him. I think he's a talented actor and I think he deserves the spotlight. And yeah, and, and in terms of this movie, he's fucking fantastic, man. Like, dude, that, that 
diabolical, sinister smile that he does is so good. Every time he smiles in this movie, it's, it's so creepy. I mean, I think he nails it. And he also does some, like, different acting personalities throughout the movie that I think he really nails. He's fantastic. He basically carries this movie on his back. So, yeah, he's he's phenomenal in this movie. It's it's a great vehicle for, for Josh Hartnett. Another thing I dug is uh, cinematography. And Shyamalan has always had some really good cinematography. I don't think it's as good as his earlier works. Uh, Signs, Unbreakable, Sixth Sense, those all had, like, impeccable cinematography. I don't think this is as good as those. However, what I did appreciate is, you know, I hate to be cliche here, but it is very Hitchcockian. What, what, what Hitchcock was good at was, you know, putting you in the point of view of the protagonist. Like, Hitchcock did that a lot. And this movie, there is so much of that. There's so much of just, like, being in the point of view of Cooper. And it works. Like, whether he's scanning the stadium, watching cops take people out of their seats, or just the concert itself. Like, in the hands of a different director, you know, the movie would film the concert from the stage. You know what I mean? Like, there would be close-ups of the singer singing or the dancers. But in this movie, we never go on the stage at all. The whole concert that we watch is from the perspective of Cooper. Another thing I, I really enjoyed, although it's like it's one of those like I enjoyed it, but the execution of it wasn't that great. Um, this is a mild spoiler here. I'm gonna I'm gonna stay as vague as I can, but about halfway, well, a little more than halfway through the movie, the movie understands that like we can't just have a serial killer be the protagonist. I mean, you could, but like the movie understands that we need a hero. We need someone to to be the foil for this for this guy. Guy, and the movie introduces you know a hero in quotes and that character comes you know as a hero comes out of left field and you don't expect it and she does become the hero of the movie for a good portion of the the last half of the movie and i thought that was a really cool idea where it's like you know we got the serial killer it's like how is he gonna get out of it but we want him to get caught but he's also kind of a sick fuck and so we needed a hero and the fact that this movie kind of presented one halfway through the movie and it comes from an unexpected way I thought that was a really cool idea. Now, the execution of that idea, particularly the, the actor or actress who plays this hero, is not a very good actor. Like, this person was very, very rough. And that sucks because it's like, if you want to present a hero halfway through the movie, the, you, you got to make sure that that motherfucker can act. You know what I mean? They really got to sell it. And I don't think the actor who takes the role of hero in this movie sells it very well. The performance was really bad. Uh, but again, I like the idea of that and ultimately like is this a great movie not really is it a good movie uh i don't know like it's it is very middle of the road there are a lot of aspects i really like about it and there's a lot of things that prevent it from being a great movie but as i said in my opening i kind of want to elaborate what i said in my opening when i said i want more of this and what i mean by that is that you know when I was growing up, there was a lot of like mid-budget action, mid-budget thrillers, and those kind of mid-budget movies don't really exist anymore. It's either like you have to be a big Hollywood blockbuster explosions and action movie, or you're like an indie drama. And like there's no, that middle ground, that mid-budget kind of thriller action movie stuff is kind of gone now. And watching Trap, I was like, man, we used to get a lot of movies like this where it's like, it's not that great, it's not that bad either but it's like you pay money for your ticket you're entertained for two hours and then you kind of just move on with your life and you know we don't really get those anymore and like for instance for those of you who remember do you guys remember like the ashley judd movies in the 2000s like kiss the girls or double jeopardy those movies were never good but like they were entertaining enough or like yeah that was a fun two hours and that's what this movie felt like it felt like a movie that that would have been released in like the late 90s or mid 2000s and i kind of want more movies like this like, yeah, it's not great, but like, at least it's a break from either something very serious and dramatic or something that's fucking bombards you with explosions and action. Just like a, a mid-tier, mid-budget, you know entertaining two hours like i want more of this kind of stuff so at the end of the day do i do i recommend trap um you know if if you're a fan of Shyamalan and you still dig his work then yeah go check it out i think you're gonna have a lot of fun here there is there is fun to be had in this movie i just think it, it misses a lot and it just it's not one of his best but i do recommend you guys check it out because there is there is something about this movie it is entertaining at the very least this movie is entertaining it may be dumb as fuck in some moments but it's entertaining nonetheless so 
you know, do I recommend this as a whole? Yeah, I think you should check it out. Do I think you should go rush out into the theater to watch this? Probably not. But I do think it's worth a watch. I think it is a fun mid-budget, mid-tier movie that you're going to have fun watching and then you're just going to move on with your life. So in that case, yeah, go check it out. So did you see Trapped? Did you like it? Did you not like it? Did you hate it? Did you really like it? Is this one of is Shyamalan's best? Is this Shyamalan's worst? Uh, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to know your thoughts. And until the next time, I will see you on the next one.